have a couple of people joining oh. us today. A show right off the top. <laughs> Phil Sanchez, Dr. Jerome Adams is joining us now. He's the newest member mm. of Wish TV, and we couldn't be prouder. Welcome. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm just so excited to be back in Indiana. Welcome We're home. To have you back. Yeah. Welcome yeah. home. And we'll, we'll talk uh, more with you in, in just a moment. But first, you won't find many people more qualified than Dr. Adams for the role because, as you'll see, medicine, not political. We'll talk more with Dr. Adams, as I just mentioned, in a moment. But first, here's a quick rundown of his extensive medical experience. For Dr. Jerome Adams, the mission has always been about the medicine. We need to educate patients. We need to change their expectation about what pain management is and is not. Dr. Adams has a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and psychology and a master's in public health and earned his medical degree from the IU School of Medicine. He was chosen by two Indiana governors to lead the state's Department of Health. He was at the forefront of the fight to stop the HIV outbreak in southern Indiana and the state's efforts to combat infant mortality. He served four years as U.S. Surgeon General, the nation's doctor, and a key focus, the opioid epidemic and making naloxone available to families around the country. An estimated 2.1 million people in the United States struggle with an opioid use disorder. There is a person dying every 12.5 minutes and more than half of those individuals are dying at home. Adams has also been a key voice to get more people vaccinated for COVID-19, especially in underserved communities. Tony Felci and I fought to have diverse representation in these trials, so we feel confident they will work in not just whites, but in blacks, in Hispanics, in Native Americans, and in other populations. And with that, we welcome in Dr. Jerome Adams. Sir, good to see you. Congratulations. Uh, thank you for being a part of the Wish TV team. We're very excited. Well, again, thank you for making me part of the team. So excited to be back home in Indiana. My family's glad to be here, and I couldn't think of a better way to break back in than with Wish. Yeah, we'll get to all the fun stuff in, in a moment. First, though, we want to address the elephant in no the room. No fun stuff? No, not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, you were appointed by former President Donald Trump. So what do you say to folks, doctor, um, who maybe think that you're pro-Trump? Well, I, I think it's a fair question that people ask, and I want people to know that uh, medicine is apolitical. Right. I worked at Eskenazi. It was Wishard back when I first started working there. And I couldn't afford to look at my patients on the table as if they were Democrats or Republicans. I had to look at them as who they were. Yeah. people, humans, Americans, and that's the approach I took when I ran the State Department of Health in Indiana, and that's the approach I took to Washington, D.C. I will forever be grateful to President Trump and Vice President Pence for asking me to take on that role, but once I took that role on, I was the United States Surgeon General, not the Surgeon General for Trump sure. or the Surgeon General for Republicans, but the Surgeon General for the entire country. For folks at home who maybe don't know, and I, I'll be honest, I'm not really too sure either. What does the Surgeon General do? Well, great question. And first of all, I'm neither a surgeon nor a general. <laughs> I actually am an anesthesiologist. Wow. And, uh, and uh, the Surgeon General actually is a vice admiral. So the office of the Surgeon General started up uh, way back uh, when we were first bringing people into this country through Ellis Island. Right. And we would send officers of the Public Health Service out to inspect ships as they were coming back into port mm. to make sure that we weren't importing diseases like smallpox or measles. Right. So it, it's really ironic that we're full circle now talking about a virus that is impacting our entire nation. Uh, my two main roles, to put it succinctly, are number one, leading up the Public Health Service of the United States, mm -hmm. 6,000 uniformed officers, which is why I get to wear that spiffy uniform. Yeah, it was very cool. It's yeah. now, it's now in my basement, almost. now in my basement, <laughs> so I'll be au auctioning them off soon. But the other role is really to give America the information they need to stay healthy. And that's a big problem these days, no doubt about that. So we're glad to have you as a part of our team as well. Why was it important for you to join the Wish TV team? Well, uh, one of the big challenges being on a national stage, quite frankly, is that a lot of the uh, national outlets have an agenda. They have a particular politically leaning audience that they cater to. And that frustrated me as Surgeon General. Sure. I, I have, to, have to say that very honestly. And uh, one of the things that was really refreshing to me was when I got to go around the country and, uh, and speak to regional TV channels. Because when you're speaking to a Wish TV audience, that's an audience that just wants to know, how do I stay safe? Mm -hmm. right. That's an audience that doesn't care whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. They want to know, should I get my kids vaccinated? 
How do I stay safe from COVID? Right. Can we go on vacation? And so uh, Wish TV has always, in my mind, been a channel that tried to steer clear of politics, yeah. tried to give people the facts, tried to make it a little fun. I tried to do that, too, when I was in Washington, D.C. You know what's funny is a full-page Washington Post story they did on me, and uh, the story was, this may be Washington, D.C.'s nicest guy, but is that what we need right now? They criticize right. me for being too nice. Right. Yeah, you're not going to get that here. Well, we appreciate you. We, we well, like again, again, that's what I love about Wish. I can be nice. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, something that's really important to you, obviously, right now is the push to get more people vaccinated. Exactly. How important is that right now, specifically when we're talking about this new variant, this Delta variant? Well, critical, critical that we get people vaccinated. And uh, in Indiana, quite frankly, could be doing a lot better. I know it's a challenge here. With this new Delta variant coming in, it is much more contagious. We still don't know yet whether it's going to be more deadly, but it could truly start another wave. And we saw in the UK, they were doing much better. The variant, that variant came in and just caused them to have another spike. Right. I don't want us to have another spike here. I don't want us to have to shut down again. I've got a 17 and a 15 year old at home and I want them to be able to go back to school. Otherwise, who knows what's going to happen between them and my wife and I. Right. So, uh, right. So, so, you know, <laughs> totally get it. And, and, I, uh -huh. and again, I say that jokingly, but people need to understand that there are consequences beyond your own individual personal health. Right. Uh, the virus is being spread in the United States now mostly through children. Yeah. And those children, you don't want to take that home to grandma mm. or grandpa and cause them to get sick. You also don't want to have to shut down again certain communities no. because of a new, a new wave. Right. Now, as, we, as we mentioned, guys, medicine, very important to this man. Absolutely. We'll bring back in our co-hosts here for today. <laughs> yes. I'm co-hosting with you guys. Yes, but. we're thrilled to be here. I want to know, what do you love most about being home? Uh, I love the people. Mm -hmm. So again, true story, the folks in my office would make fun of me because I would ride the metro in and I would talk to other people. And on the East Coast, you don't talk no. to other people. <laughs> And, and I, people would look at me like I was crazy when I'd say hello or, uh, or good morning to someone. So yeah. I just love mm -hmm. being here. I, I love how much people have embraced my family. Mm -hmm. People from Indiana, the whole time I was in Washington, D.C., they really reached out to me. And uh, we talked about this a little bit before we went on air. Yeah. My wife was diagnosed with metastatic cancer mm -hmm. about um, a month after she moved to Washington, D.C. And people sent us meals, people reached out to us, people prayed for us. It really was, was something that, that made me want to come back here to my adopted home. I didn't grow up here, but I've lived here longer than I've lived anywhere else. Right. And I'm a Colts season ticket holder. <laughs> there you go. So like, even the football team that. got me on board. It's a special place. Yeah, Doc, special that, place. that got exactly where I was looking. I, I know, <laughs> look, you've held the biggest title any doctor would dream of in the entire country, but I know your top two ranks dad and husband exactly mm -hmm. this time last thanksgiving walk me into your shoes what was going on with your wife lacy well uh my wife lacy had actually been diagnosed with cancer for a third time so i told you we were diagnosed uh about a month after she moved to washington dc she had treatment that was successful but many people uh, they look at me uh, as the person who was on tv during covid and uh I was giving people the best possible scientific information, but I was also living it. My wife had a delayed cancer diagnosis because of COVID. Wow. And so she had to start treatment again later. And on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, I actually had to take my wife to the emergency room, mm. drop her off because you weren't allowed in the emergency room. I'm the Surgeon General <laughs> of the United States. I have to leave her at the door and, uh, and walk away, not knowing if my wife is going to live the next 24 hours because she was having some pretty significant side effects and uh, we didn't know what was going on. So it was a scary moment for me, but uh, it's a side that people don't see when they look at these public servants out there really sacrificing to try to do the best job that they can. And you know, I'm okay, but I really feel bad for so many of the public health officials, the Dr. Keynes, the yeah. Christina Boxes. There are people like that all over the country who are sacrificing day in and day out to try to keep their community safe. Doc, I know you're a small town guy at heart too. We, we can sense it here. I know you can at home too. Yeah. The big title, it's, it's Dr. Adams here for us. And yeah. we, we really appreciate you being 
so open and transparent here. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. And again, just glad to be home and hoping we can get Hoosiers the information they need to be healthy. You know, I don't want anyone to feel shamed by the decisions that they make, whether it's to vaccinate or not or to mask or not. But what I don't want people to do is to make those decisions based on misinformation. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. through our relationship with Wish TV, we can get people the information they need to make the best choice for them. We love it. And we love that you're a huge Colts fan and that you love their initiative. So Father's Day, too. Yes. yes. Exactly. Just Bring pass. us into the living room. What it look like on Sunday? <laughs> well, uh, yes. I, I did get breakfast in bed. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, they made me, uh, made me waffles. Uh, my wife brought me in a mimosa, so moderation, everyone, <laughs> moderation. Everything in balance, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. But, but it was just, you know, my, my kids are my heart. Yeah. They, they really are. And many people don't know. I'm the first Surgeon General in uh, modern times to actually have school-age kids. This is usually mm -hmm. a retirement job mm -hmm. for most people. So, again, while I was going through my tenure as Surgeon General, focusing on vaping, focusing on, yeah. on marijuana use amongst young people, uh, looking at the harm of people being out of school during the shutdowns, I was living it. I wasn't just preaching it. I was having to make those same decisions yeah. for me and my kids. Yeah. And your son, it's his birthday today. Oh, it is. Hey. Happy, yeah, happy birthday, 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 Kaden. Birthday shout out. 17th birthday, and uh, sorry I didn't get you a car. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm wishing you happy birthday from Wish TV. Oh, man. Shout out right on to a pretty cool so, dad. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're so thrilled to have you here. Thank so you. welcome to the team. Welcome to the family. Thank I you. Glad to be here. Yes. The fun begin. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, another part of the